All right, you guys. Even though Jeff and I are away on our third anniversary cruise, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. I wanted to post something still every day for at least 365. Got to have goals, right? So, um, I'm posting something for you every day on this channel, either a demo or a product review or a new kind of artwork or new technique, new color, something every day, just in case um, we don't have very good cell service on the ship and can't um, live stream or post since we are going into a tornado, hurricane, thunder wave, whatever. Um, I don't know. Who knows what will happen? So I wanted to be sure. So I'm going to post something every day. And, you know, they may confiscate my art supplies as I'm getting on the cruise ship or in the suitcase. Who knows? Then again, what am I going to do with a heat gun? Like, knock on the cabin of the captain and say, give me the keys and hold them up with a heat gun? I don't think so. So, I don't know. Who knows? Better safe than sorry. So, I'm going to art for you guys. So, this particular video is going to go over the differences in Stone Coat's base tint and other brands. So, for the sake of this video, I'm using Color Obsessions Snow White um, paste. And it's a very good brand. It's I love it just as much as I do Cast and Craft, Artisus White, Just Resins White, um, La Reza's White. It's all good. It's all pretty similar in the way that it reacts with other colors while in resin. The thing I'm going to demonstrate today is the difference in Stone Coat versus the other guys. So the difference mainly is that this has an oil property to it. And while I still stand behind the fact that you should not put oil paints in resin because it will either A, pit to the end of the earth, or it will leak out like the shining all over your floor. I know this for a fact, happened to me. Don't wanna know. So what I'm gonna do for you guys today right now is a demonstration on how to work with these to make them work best for you for what you're going for. So if you're wanting a frothy, foamy cell, like for an ocean pour that has like tighter cells, like a wave, basically, you're gonna wanna use a paste, right? And if you're wanting something that has larger cells, maybe for a larger painting, or you want some like webbing or lacing, you're gonna to wanna to use the base tint from Stone Coat. Um, and how you use the paste versus the base tint is very different in that with the base tint, you wanna push color over the base tint. Stone Coat base tint needs to be on the bottom because the oil properties, it's going to alter the surface tension and like diffuse the cells. I don't even know if that's the right word. We're gonna call it an e-science word, um, disperse cell dispersion. Um, that's what's gonna create the cells is the oil property. Think of like an oil slick or something like that. You want the color to go over it to create your cells. Whereas with the tint, nope, the paste, you want that to be on top of your other colors. So they each react to surface tension differently. But I'm gonna just do a demo for you guys so you can get a visual. I'm a visual person. I assume all of you artists out there are as well. So I'm going to, maybe I'll make some of their new gold in there too because <laughs> I love it, love it so much. Okay. So hold on just a second, let me get that logo out of the way. There we go. So I'm going to use the base tint white from Stone Coat, Snow White from Color Obsession, which is available on my website, artstillet.com. 
and I'm gonna use equal amounts of those. And then I'm gonna use a new color that I haven't used yet, but Jeff just discovered that we have it, so he's super pumped about trying it. It is Dark Turquoise by Color Obsession. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of the gold that Stone Coat is releasing because it's gorgeous. I'm not using too many colors in this because the point of this is to demonstrate the differences, not really create some fantastical um, piece of artwork, although I do hope it comes out fantastical. It's brand new. Anytime you get a paste or a new paint or, well, any time you paint really, make sure you stir it up. If you run into a paste that is thickened or looks like it kind of dried out or separated a little bit, put the cap back on and run it under some hot water and that should help everything mix back into where it's supposed to be. Now, um, for most powders, paste, tints, whatever, the standard measurement is 10% paint to resin. That's a starting point. If you mix too much paint into your resin, you're gonna end up with a chemical imbalance basically, and you're gonna have marshmallow fluff instead of nice, flowing, smooth resin. Don't want marshmallow fluff. I've made that happen by accident on some of my videos. Just tune back, it'll be there. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this um, color obsession. Where am I, where are you? Color obsession. And then this one I'm gonna mark stone coat. Hopefully you can see that. This is the only pen I have is a micron and Jeff would kill me if he knew that I had resiny fingers on his new pens. Like he hasn't even used that pen yet. He'll be fine. So, if you haven't used any of the Stone Coat base tints yet, because of its enamel or oil-like um, makeup, it does have a slight odor. Some people like it, some people are very sensitive. I just wanna warn you about that before you try it because I don't want anybody out there to have any surprises if you're super sensitive to smells. Also, wear a respirator if you're concerned. This is a no VOC um, resin. So unless you put way too much heat on it, you're not gonna smell it. So this is the color that we're using. Where am I, where are you? Dark turquoise. Of course it's not gonna focus because my life, there we go. It's Dark Turquoise by Color Obsession. I do have some of this in stock currently. However, things change as videos post. So if you go to the website, can't find it, have questions, shoot me an email, thornton at artistilldeath.com, two T's, two L's, and I'll be happy to help you out, answer your questions, and um, reorder paint that's out if, if you can't find it. Okay. I don't know if this color is going to show true on the camera because the lighting is set for p.m. and it is currently very a.m. But it is a gorgeous, deep, rich teal turquoise color. And the last color we're using is the new gold from Stone Coat. It's very glittery, very extra, and I love it. Everybody that's seen it has loved it. It's like a metal flake. That's what it looks like. Um, it's very glittery and it goes very airborne. So if you don't want it to look like a pixie farted in your house, um, maybe not use it because it's very extra. In fact, that's my bid for what they should name it. They should just call it extra. When you mix a powder or a glitter into your, where am I? Into your resin, I just basically just gently fold it until it's a little bit more incorporated. That way, less chance of things flying out and getting all over your studio, house, kitchen. 
just liquid gold, y'all. Ooh, so sparkly. I don't know how they did it, but it's beautiful. All right. So I'm not going to put the clear down like I usually do because this is just a test. I'm going to, here's, okay, let me just tell you what my plan is. Look at me here. What my plan is, is that I'm going to do the stone coat white on this side, the color right here, and the color obsession here because I want to swipe the color obsession white over the color and then the color over the stone coat because that's kind of the order it needs to be in. Color obsession, the paste needs to go over the color unless you're using stone coat, then that needs to be on the bottom. So this is stone coat. And since these cells expand further than the paste, I'm going to do almost half. Just filling in all the voided areas. Having some resin down first helps your design flow over your substrate more easily. So then I'm gonna do the color. And I really hope this color shows on camera because it's kind of amazing. Also, I may need more color. That's okay because I have some resin left over that I can mix more. So we're just gonna do that real quick. A lot of times I'll keep um, some clean resin set aside just in case there's a color I feel like I need more of or if I need to fix something or if I decide to do the edges a different kind of way. Better safe than sorry. People ask a lot of times how we figure out how much resin we're gonna use. And ultimately, there's so many factors that go into how much resin you should make. It's really hard to say. Um, I know that Art Resin has a calculator. It's not really accurate for our use, but it does help a lot of people. So that may be a good place for you guys to start. I'm going to talk to Stonecoat about putting a usage chart up on their website. This is very opaque and I'm just pushing it just to where the base coat is. I'm not pushing it into it because I'm going to do a swipe and I don't want to contaminate my gloves with the other colors. Now this is the color obsession white. I'm going to just finish off this side. And I have a little bit left off both whites, so that's cool. Just in case I get a stain on the other areas. So, so far there's not a real noticeable difference. They're both really opaque. See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna have to fix that. But since it's gonna be a swipe and it's just a test, it'd be fine. Now I'm putting some gold into this because it is amazing and I just wanna use it. All right, so I'm gonna put a little heat on it. You don't wanna do that much. When you're trying to get cells, use as little heat as possible because if you use too much heat, then your resin will be too liquid. And even if you get cells that you really, really like, they won't hold up while it's setting. 
You just want to put just enough to pop the bubbles out of your surface. Do quick passes until you don't see any more little bubbles popping. It shouldn't take that long. And it all depends on how much, um, how quickly or how briskly you mixed your, your resin up. So I'm using a bent spatula. Nope, that's not what it's called, but you know what I mean. And I'm going to just swipe. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna swipe into the color. I think this is wide enough that it won't make this white travel into this white. And if it does, it won't go that far, so it'd be fine. And I might bring this back into this way because something that's great about the paste that isn't really a property of the stone coat is this will sell whether this paste goes over this one or this one goes over this one. Whereas, the base tint really needs to be on the bottom to work. So I could swipe this over this, but it won't work the same if I do this over this. That makes sense? I hope it does. Moving on. So when you swipe, you don't wanna go all the way down to the surface, your canvas. You just wanna angle it slightly and lightly just push the resin over the other colors. Also, after each pass, you want to wipe your spatula off. Now I think I'm going to do this over this. You can see cells popping up over here, not so much yet over here, but if I bring this back this way, maybe it'll yield better results. This is gonna sell whether I hit heat on it or not, whereas this kind of needs heat and motion to more work. So let's do that. Now usually with this heat gun, I will push the resin around, but for the sake of this demo, I'm not gonna do that just yet. I just want you to see the differences in the cell structure of this side versus this side. So you can see the cells starting to pop up over here and then here. And you can really see where stone coats cells are making magic. Also that gold is losing its mind. So let's take our experiment a little bit further and let's push it around with, well, hold on. This is a little bit too organized right here, so I'm going to kind of break that up, I think, and swipe this way. Maybe. Looks the same amount of organized, but I like it. So let's push these colors a bit and see if we can make something more magical happen. Give it a second, they're starting to pop up. They're kind of smaller, but they're still present. And what I was saying earlier is it kind of all comes down to what kind of cells you're looking for, what kind of um, 
Y'all, this top corner is doing some banana stuff. I'm gonna have to show you. wonder if I can, I may be about to ruin this piece, but I want to try something. If I can get my life together real quick. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but like there's peekaboo cells right here and it's like glittering only in the cells. It's kind of sandwiched the gold under the color obsession white but on top of the stone coat white I hope that's focusing like I would like it to but who knows so I'm gonna see if I can um, exploit that just a little bit and maybe work it into this part don't know if it's working I don't know if it has to go all the way over the stone coat part but starting to pop up a little bit over here. Maybe if I use a little bit more of the color obsession white and push it over something in that. Use all my teal again. Okay. Now wipe off your spatula. There's some glittery cells popping up right here. So as you can see, the difference in cell structure and size is very different. Let me switch you guys over to just Lucy Cam. So there's that piece. I hope you guys like this quick tutorial. I will be back tomorrow with another one. Don't forget to check out our website if you're interested in any of our colors or if you have any, any questions, anything at all that I can help you out with. Hit me up, send me a text or an email or whatever, thornartistalette.com. Um, 
If you're interested in any Stone Coat products, use the code ATD, all capitals, to get $30 off your $50 order. It looks great on us, and we appreciate it so much. Y'all are bananas, and I'll see y'all manana. Bye! I said bye!